Hey guys, um, Brittany here. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about the Eastern Tent Caterpillar. Now these are native to, um, North America, um, the East Coast of course, um, and they are mainly found in Virginia, or at least, uh, Virginia, or at least that's where I found mine. There's one. I raise a few of them. I have three at the moment. I'm planning on finding more. Sorry, my eyeliner is not very good today. I'm planning on finding more. Here's what they look like in the caterpillar form after the sixth instar, which they have six of them, of course. And it's before they come out of their tree. This is what he looks like after the sixth instar, after coming out of the tree. And he's looking for a place to pupate or cocoon, that's what that means. Um, once he found, finds a place to pupate, which would be in my container where I already have a, pu uh, um, a cocoon right now in there, um, he will spin a web around him, which I'll show you in a minute of the cocoon I have right now. He will spin, a, um, spin webbing, or um, co a webbed cocoon, and he will be there for about two weeks, and then out comes the tent moth the eastern tent moth. Um, they're very cool moths. I haven't seen them in person, but I looked them up. And let me just tell you a few facts on these, and then I'll show you how to set up your home for them if you're planning on raising them. Um, eastern tent caterpillars are pretty small. Here, I'll give you a scale. Oops. Here's a, the average pencil. So they're pretty small. Um, they have pretty short lives, if, especially if they're female, because after, um, if they're female after laying their eggs, they will die. Um, after they die, they will, um, after they lay, I mean, after they lay their eggs, um, the eggs will obviously hatch and the cycle will happen once again, except these little guys like to, or moths like to lay their eggs in trees. Preferably rose tree, rose bu cherry blossom trees, ro cherry trees, apple trees, rose bushes. Uh, I found mine in an apple tree in my backyard. Actually, I found a few of them. Not in the tree, but like around the tree. Um, and I'm going to show you the cocoon. It's wrapped up in my paper towel, but you can see that. He's right... Right, right there, and underneath there. Underneath in there. You can't really see him, but there's a lots and lots of webbing in here. And he's all wrapped up in that in about a week or so, because he's been in here for a few days. Um, after about a week or so, there will be well, baby caterpillars. Now I'm going to teach you how to take care of these little baby caterpillars. Um, caterpillars are pretty easy to take care of, especially the eastern tent, mainly because all they eat is their host plant, and you might want to wet the host plant every every few days to keep the moisture in there. But the host plant is from a cherry tree, a rose tree, or basically whatever they lived off of. That is their host plant. Um... Now how you're going to create their house perfect um, for cocooning isn't very complicated because it's not like they're monarch caterpillars, they're just regular caterpillars. What you're going to want to do is get a layer of paper towels so they have something to burrow in. That's what mine burrowed in anyways. Then you're going to put some dirt in there. Sorry, my caterpillar's on the stick. You're going to put some dirt in there. Um, some leaves of the host plant, um, a little bit of water droplets on these, um, host plants, maybe a flower or two, um, and some sticks. It's not really that hard to actually take care of them, but they do eat these leaves a lot. I just put these in yesterday morning. Look how much they already eat. And they're little caterpillars. I only have three of them. And one of them is cocooning, so he couldn't eat. Um, so yeah, they do eat a lot, and let me tell you, they do defecate or poop a lot, um, so you may want to clean their 
their little house every few days. But other than that, they're pretty cool and they're just nice. And some people might be sensitive that, to their hairs and they might break out in hives. So if you think you're, if you touch these and you start getting a little bit itchy around where they've walked, oh, pfft, sorry, about where they, um, where they've walked, um, then you may not want to raise these types mainly because of the hair, because they're very fluffy. But um, eastern ten caterpillars are probably my favorite to raise because they're simple and they're cute and yeah and once they become moths they will after they um breed after they mate with a male if it's a girl if they mate with a male um they will become pregnant of course um and lay their eggs on a leaf um in tree in a tree and build a nest for those eggs so once if you have a male and a female in one place together for a long period of time and they do mate, you may want to release the moth into the wild because after the, they become moths, they mate and make eggs and then you might want to release the moth into the wild. But other than that, they're pretty easy to care for and the reason why I say you should release them into the wild is one, because they create the nest and two, because they can lay up to 150 to 300 eggs. And unless you want 300 caterpillars running around your house, I suggest you free it after it breeds. Um, and you're going to want to handle these with care, as you can see, because um, you don't want to squish them or harm them in any way. You're going to want to have your hand flat out like this one, handling them, and maybe put a finger so they can climb over it onto a different hand. They're pretty easy to take care of overall. And the reason why I make this video, I'm going to put them back. The reason why I make this video is because I have searched a countless amount of times on YouTube for guides on how to take care of these of these caterpillars, and I have found a very minimum amount. So I'm kind of blindsided about the whole thing, and I had to figure out on my own, or even read long articles. And I know you guys don't want to read articles this big with a bunch of pages ahead. So you just want to watch a quick video about how to raise them, how do you want the house to be, and what's coming your way, and how to take care of them when they pupate and make their cocoon, so you don't harm the cocoon. Um, yeah, um, what the cocoon looks like, since you couldn't really see it, was it was very webbed, very, very webbed, um, in, my, in a napkin. And on the inside, you'll kind of see him a little bit, but not too much. Um, he'll be in there um, very small. He shri They shrivel up to about this big. They go from this big and shrivel up like that in a little ball. And then a web grows, and then they spin a web around them. And then they release this um, yellow powder to actually help them become a, a moth, the tent moth. This one's probably going to pupate really soon, because right now he's actually going underneath a leaf where he will probably pupate. What you're going to want to do is just leave them alone for a few days, and they should all be pupated and in a cocoon. And then in about two weeks after they turn into a cocoon or pupate, um, they'll be moths and ready to be sent into the wild. Um, if that was enough help, let me know. If not, just ask questions below, and I'll make a video response to those video to that question. So you're not confused and have to read a long paragraph like I did. All right, I think this video was informational enough. Um, have fun with your caterpillars. Be careful if you're allergic or haven't raised caterpillars before, because you don't want to hurt them or yourself. Have fun!